It is a beautiful Saturday morning here in New York and we are heading to Pennsylvania today. Uh, the past few farms we've seen have actually been upstate New York, but now we're going about two and a half hours into Pennsylvania and we're gonna take a look at one farm that is about two and a half hours away and then another farm is about two hours away and it's a one hour drive from that other farm. So <laughs> although I'm not really looking forward to sitting in my car for you know five hours today, it's not too bad and uh, I do everything for you guys because the end goal is uh, to provide as many people as possible with high quality animal foods to make as many people as happy and healthy as possible. Unfortunately, uh, that involves me doing everything myself, including raising the animals, raising the eggs, raising the dairy, all that stuff. What is this, day 742 with no haircut? Uh, so we're up here at uh, Dairy Farm. Uh, what, what is the acreage? 125, 123. It's, it's funny because I've been to like 180 acre farms and all these people lie about the acreage and it's like they're like half the size of this, but they're saying it's like 200 acres. Uh, so, we round up. yeah, R really nice looking property. Um, guy was milking dairy a couple years ago, right? We stopped like four years ago. Yeah, now you have what you have a couple just cows beef. just grazing, yeah, selling some I beef. Do insurance full time, so that this yeah. has to be too much. To do this guy's that. this guy's killing himself. How many hours a week were you working when you were doing the cows and uh, the we insurance? Four thirty and going till nine thirty every day. Man, every day, seven days a week. Yeah. And, Set. Run, and run from the house to the barn in my car, shower quick, go back to the office. Jesus. How stupid. So this part here, this little addition right here on the end, we built that brand new about 12 years ago. This is yeah. the milk house where yeah. all the milk comes into. Okay. So th th these woods over here, yeah, that's... It, it goes straight up to that ridge. Basically, this whole ridge is ours. So there's 80 acres on this side and 40 on this side. Like 83 on this side and 40 so on this of, side. So of these 83 acres, how much of this is... Uh, pasture and how much of it is the woodland probably only like 30 acres is woods it's all pasture the farm does have a spring yeah okay um, so this fresh water we never are low on water even though the drought these are grain bins yeah um, then all the meadows have those see the co concrete container down there in that field there yeah they're called water stations or hydrants yeah so all the meadows have a hydrant, so cows can drink from the hydrant. Oh wow! So there's no worry about uh, getting water set up or anything. No, it's all done. Okay, that's a big deal. Is that a, is that a dug well? What is that? That's a round bill feeder. So you put round bills in it to feed them hay outside. Okay. Yeah. So no. What I usually see is um, I see the farmers. They'll take like a a four by four and they'll roll out the bale on the back of the the four by four. So what is? I just put it in there and they kind of eat around it. So okay, so the bell. It. If you okay. roll it out, they'll waste it. All. They'll lay on it and waste it. It'll be just yeah. a bunch of shit. It'll be garbage. Yeah. So in the winter, they mostly... I don't, They kind of keep them in in the winter time. Yeah. We have a covered barnyard, which is nice. Cause yeah. Feed them outside. Yeah. They exercise every day. Like a like ten twenty thousand dollar job for all of them. It was more than that, but okay. I got it, we got, we got it free because of the watershed. This is the milk house. Okay. This was built brand new like 12 years ago. Oh, no, this is in this is in really good shape. Yeah, no, it's all it's brand new. It's metal ceilings. It's got the it's all insulated. So you have a um a butcher shop and you like a grocery thing? Yeah, we sell meat, so we we want to sell dairy eggs and uh and possibly and even office, and that the back corner is like an area for the um the vacuum pump makes everything work i see okay sanitation sink slop sink so what makes you want to do raw materials that's what my customers want they want the, the raw grass-fed dairy oh. butter cheese yeah. cream all that type of stuff i've got a guy that was milking cows because right now we can't find a, a processor to pick up our milk so i have guys that are milking cows that are just Go out of business because they can't find someone to buy their raw milk. Yeah, we could probably. Yeah, we could. I could talk about that in detail too. So these are thirty. There's thirty-two stalls, so that equivalent to around twenty. If I, I milk Jersey, so they don't make as much as the Halstein does. They're more higher in butter fat. Yeah, when they're when they're grass, so what do they do? Four or five gallons a day? Oh, uh, probably. You don't make as obviously this is grass, so you don't make as much. Um, my sister was their milk and grass fed only. I'm not sure what the difference. It'd probably be 
maybe uh, 20 pounds a day. So mm -hmm. these are the stalls. I did take the pipeline down. The pipeline is here. But this is the pipeline the milk would go into that goes into the milk. I took it down and I was going to take it for scrap. Because I didn't think anybody would want to buy our place to milk cows. So I was just going yeah. to strip it. Yeah. But it's okay. also here. I did. I do have that milk cow stuff kind of sold. Guy gave me a deposit, but if it's something you want, I can probably give his money back and give him a hundred bucks to, to go away. Okay. But I did, I did sell that stuff. So, okay. um, so here's the gutters, the gutters, the, the gutters, what takes the manure out. Yeah. It's like a, um, you can see the chain. Do you see the end of it there? Yeah. And those white things are hutches. That's what the calves are raised in. So this is like a conveyor belt? Yeah, kind of. It's a conveyor, it's a, it's a barn cleaner it's called. So it cleans the yeah. barn. So all the manure runs, piles hole. down here. And then we back the spreader. There's a spreader you back underneath it to catch it. Then you go spread it in the fields. I see, yeah. And that's okay. the calf watches that we, we calves are raised in. Okay. And then when the, like during the day, in the morning, they kind of, what I would do is let them out in here. This is like the covered barnyard it's called. Yeah. So the cows would eat during the day at the tire rail. Oh, we got one left. Yeah, we got one left. <laughs> and, um, and the water station, that blue station hey, over there. This is great because they get exercise all day. It's less labor. Just let them out here to eat and do what they want to do in front of the day. Yeah. You have a machine barn down there. Yeah, we, we store all the hay inside there around bales because you'd probably want to do grass fed, so you do the dry round bales or baleage dry yeah. round bales. You said that blue thing was the. the water water like a water thermal, so to speak. Okay. What type of cow is this? Jersey. This is a Jersey. They have the higher, richer butter fat. Yeah. What is this? this is only like a four or four or five hundred pound animal, right? Yeah, Not she's even? probably close to seven. Oh, is she? Yeah. Good size. She That's my be, uh... She, her horn should be gone, but we never got rid of her. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to get rid of the horns, right? Well, it's, it's safer for the cow or cows. They're so, like, she'll, she'll mellow. She won't bother you, but yeah. since you worry about her kind of, you know, getting rough house and then get hurt, hurt somebody else. I see. Cow or, yeah. They should be cut off. They're only doing it with the calf. They're not as big, but they're doing it with, with their little nub. Mm -hmm. kind of stick, almost like a syrup lighter. Kind of you milk this one for your family, or? Uh, you milk this one at all? She's not had she has a, she's not a cow yet. She's still a heifer. She's oh, still, still a heifer. So okay, never had a baby. Okay. So if you have a barn like this and you wanna like if I wanted to milk some some goat and sheep, would you bring them in that barn and keep them separate? You probably could do you probably have to do like a table. Because I have a lady over in Franklin who sells raw could do raw milk. And she's just like 20 minutes away. She, she milks all her goats and sells, makes cheese yeah. and raw milk. And, um, but yeah, you'd probably want to do a separate area for the goats because they're so little. you got to have mm -hmm. them a little smaller. Yeah. And that's over there is a horse barn. We have two horses. This, this is the horse barn? Yeah. Okay. So this there is the horse barn kind of thing. So we have two stalls for horses. This is a... Uh... The water room, so that's kind of where the spring okay. comes, water comes up in the spring. Okay. Yeah. This is like a feed room in there. And okay. Crazy. So this is it's a dug it's a dug well. It's like it's basically clean natural water. Yep. Right. It's like a spring box, water box, and catches the water. Your kids ride or? My wife does. Oh. They do a little bit, but not very much. Uh oh, you guys are gonna? Best. Is Frank gonna marry a crazy horse girl? Pass on that one. As a, their mother and son, actually. Oh, are they? One of my clients passed away down by Liberty, and yeah. So she like, gave him some um, parting gift. Yeah, she was or her daughter said, "Why don't you take home?" And, uh, then we have uh, there's a little paddock here. We put some sheep out here just because they're we got them as just pets. Yeah, they eat anything, right? Yeah. Hey. They got uh, those brambles all over them. Yeah, I went to, uh, I was at the the beach yesterday and I got those all in my socks cutting me up. <laughs> they got plenty of, uh, 
They got plenty of wool to protect them though. Are these for uh are these we for meat? Pets. We we're probably gonna have them. They can't be bred this year. It'll be next year. So we'll probably would sell their babies for meat or yeah. keep a couple. And so normally they have twins. So they can't what are these? Weigh like 80, 90 pounds? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah probably. They're this. They're born this spring. They're curious. They're very curious. Yeah. She's a. The one on the right was bottle fed by us, so she's like a pet. Yeah. Just follows you around. The other two are a little bit different. They, I, we got from the college here in Delhi. Mm-hmm. They only do when you milk sheep. It's only like if one, one gallon, if that, per uh, per animal. The goat will do more. Yeah, yeah. We have a person that's going to milk like fifty goats, and they make cheese. And so I, I think you'd be might better off just finding people to buy their shit. You think so? This is this is going to be quite a. It is quite an opportunity. Quite a, you would you probably going to need to employ two or three people. <laughs> you would, and also being able to trust them. That's the next so thing. to be here every day. Yeah, you might almost better to find a family to live in a house. Well, I was going to come out here myself. You live here, yep. I was going to come out here myself and do some of it, but I don't know, you know, since I don't know what I'm doing, like, yeah, I mean, I'm going to hire one or two people, but I don't know if, how much, how involved I can actually be in the, uh, in the day-to-day -day logistics. Yeah. So oh, because, like, you know how to do all this stuff. You know how to, like... Drive a tractor, fix right. the pipes, all that type of stuff. You gotta buy equipment. I, we have some equipment we sell on the farm, but we don't have everything. We have kind of sold some stuff, then hired people to do stuff. You're talking probably if you bought the, bought the farm, you're gonna have probably another two, three hundred thousand into it to do what you want to do. Just to two hundred, three hundred thousand, just to just to milk 20, 30 cows. To get it all set up and build your, because you gotta be able to get a bottle or no, that's kind of what I wanted to ask you about. So I'm laughing because this uh this hundred what is it 140 acre property? This 100 a quarter acre property is twice as big as the 200 acre property I saw last week. So someone's lying. <laughs> it's, big, it's a big giant. Square, you know, it's just both sides of the road. But it's very compact. It's not. It's all right here. And this is, it's not tillable, but it's about as quality pasture as you can get. Yeah. Right. Because you do rotate. Because you're doing grass yeah. fed, you probably yeah. would do strips of grazing on all this. Yeah. And we would just bring in if we needed silage or hay, we would bring it in. My main concern was, would we be able to get enough cows up here to process at a butcher shop? And what this guy is telling me is actually that they were looking to have a facility built in here for the town because there's so many cows in the area they have no one to bring them to so uh, i'm super excited i don't think i'm going to find a property better than this to be honest uh especially from the house perspective because you know the barns the facilities that stuff is never going to be perfect you're going to need a loan and grants to build that stuff but the house is nice it already has like cable ran to it don't have to worry about business stuff so we'll see how the the next property looks and then maybe we'll go see another one next week but i have a feeling uh this one is going to edge the other ones out who knows i'm open-minded i'm always open to to seeing what uh, opportunities there are but uh this guy that you know owns this property you know he has a bunch of connections knows a lot of people in you know the neighboring areas the agricultural schools the college we can get everything hooked up here if we want to uh and i don't see why we wouldn't uh, because you know there's no there's no Wi-Fi towers near in this area I don't think they're gonna be here anytime soon and and this next farm we're going to which is about an hour south of here I'm actually concerned that it is by this like kind of resort area so there are definitely some towers that I looked up and saw but we might as well go take a drive down there and see because it's only an extra hour so we're about three miles from this next farm and unfortunately I don't think it's gonna work because on this like hilltop ridge that's overlooking uh, this area there's this gigantic five grams tower so uh, unfortunately this little area is you know, probably too high of a Wi-Fi frequency so we you know we didn't waste too much time driving down there it's only about half an hour out of the way because it is kind of on the way back to the city uh, but I don't know what I'm gonna tell this guy I think I'm just gonna kind of take a quick look around the property and then just leave um, because that, that, that's a deal breaker you know I'm not gonna drive you know two three hours out of Manhattan into Pennsylvania 
and and then there happens to be a cell tower right near the property no there's properties without cell infrastructure and i think the reason there's a tower here is because there is this like uh resort place that people might go to on vacation that's pretty close by uh so that's that's another downside and it's kind of close to a town Oh, well, we're at the other farm. I don't know where this guy is. Those are some big chickens. Maybe I'm just not used to seeing chickens. Or those are roosters or whatever. So this is a complete shack. I don't know what that building is. But this is like... This is ragged. This is a feeder. I think it's a, a bale loader. Oh no, so this is where he stores the hay bales. Because that's a bale loader. Um, he's got some tractor storage there. I saw a guy riding a tractor in the field, uh, I think it was mowing hay, so that might have been him, so he might be turning around and coming back. Got a little kitty right there. That's probably another outbuilding. I don't know what these tanks are for. He's got a horse trailer there, old tractor. This is the main house, so let me knock on the door and see if someone's here. Yeah, he's coming right now, I hear the tractor. So you've never seen a camera like this? Oh, so you've been old school out here. Have you like have you gone down to the city at all? Maybe forty five years. <laughs> oh really, really? So you just it's you've totally been... different down by you, I guess. Oh no, I'm I mean like I come out here, I look around, I have like no idea what I'm doing. So I'm sure you feel the same when you go down there. Was the people all over by you? Oh uh, well now with the with the virus you know the virus nonsense, right? It's all crazy. It's yeah, like up here. Yeah, now they're, now, they're, yeah, now they're coming up here. Now they're coming up here. How many cattle do you have now over here? How many heads? Oh, there's got to be 50 of them. Oh, you got 50? I got a few, few in yeah. the house. But so so the, you've been pretty much, you've been here your whole life? Farm's been in the family? Yeah, I didn't go too far. <laughs> no, this is my grandparents. And he bought in uh, 1921. 1921. My father and my mother. And then after, the, after my mom and dad, my father died. You have a family now? or? Only brothers and sisters. Uh, you, are you here by yourself, or you have? Yeah, I put the kids up there. Not they're, they went away this afternoon. So we're on the other side of this guy's property. <laughs> this is where this guy's farm starts, and this goes all the way up back there. Yep, right to the barn up that way. It's almost entirely pasture, right? Yeah, that's what I did at home, except there's five acres next to this driveway. Guys, I'm walking through this property. This guy's a complete character. I don't think I can get it because of the tower so close by. <laughs> but but we basically looked through the property. I'm like I'm like taking some pictures of it for him because he didn't want to like pay a real estate agent to take pictures. So I'm kind of helping him out, doing him a favor. And you know we're towards the end of his property, like on his neighbor's property, just taking some pictures of the outside. And his neighbor comes over, and these two guys are like old school out in the forest woods like they hate city people and uh, this guy was joking to me like oh well i'd rather be chasing women i was like <laughs> i gotta hire this guy because we both had the same thing in mind just lay on the beach with some russian girls all day but uh, i'm gonna take a just walk around the rest of the property take take some pictures of it for him there's not really much uh to show you guys so this guy has about 50 head of beef cattle and You can see a plane in the sky. His neighbor actually flies uh, planes around. It was a lot closer earlier. This has turned into such a weird day. This guy is like old school. He's in his 60s. He's like some guy who's lived on a farm his whole life. Doesn't have a family and He's listed this property for like a million. The other farm he has is listed for like near two million. Some campers just showed up. They're walking up and down his property. Like he rents the property out for campers. I, I mean, I don't know. And this guy knows pricing too. You know, I was offering to buy some of uh, his beef cattle and he knows that he's supposed to get, you know, X price for Angus because it's premium. And uh, on Frankie's, we usually buy older dairy cows because you know we don't really have a market uh, for the Angus stuff but we could do Angus and just sell it for a little more too but the point is like this guy knows his prices he knows his stuff uh, but um, the poor guy had a stroke I think some years ago that's why he's he, he talks a little off and his uh, his hand his left hand is injured and he can't really move it 
So I think that's why he's uh, part of the reason he's selling this property. He can't do all the work on it anymore. Um, I mean, at this point, I'm just here like because I think it's interesting, and I'm I'm helping this guy out by taking some pictures. I'm, you know, being a little nice and taking a couple hours out of my day. I mean, I'm already out here. I'm learning a little bit, just seeing what this guy's doing. Uh, the spring-fed ponds on the property are pretty cool. Um, I've always wanted to have one of those, but I mean, this is like <laughs> this is an old dump. The 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 cows really graze all of this down. It's like almost not enough land for this amount of cattle but he, he's got 50 head on 100 acres so it's still working uh, so we're gonna go and take uh, some pictures of the the barns and the houses for this guy and then he's gonna take me to his other farm and I'm gonna take pictures of the land for him hopefully my camera battery doesn't die look we got the campers they're hiking up that hill over there probably gonna go in the woods or something I think he's charging them like $80 for two nights for the family to camp out here so, you know, it's not bad money. It's funny because this is kind of what you think of when you think of typical farm life. You have like a pan of water, some chickens walking around. Oh, we got some baby chicks over here. They look cute. Little baby chicks. Those are probably a few weeks old. You got just like some cat wandering around, chilling. Like even like the stone pavement here it's like so farm like rustic old barn i don't think my uh animal noises are going to be suitable oh look we got a little kitty just chilling on the farm yeah this is uh this is definitely uh Let's actually take a look inside this. Yeah, I'm not... Oh, man. So this is like... Oh, man, I just stepped in a bunch of cow shit. You know, surprisingly, I've been here for two hours, and that's the first cow shit I've stepped in. So this is a milking station. God knows when this was last used. There's cobwebs on it. So the pigs got uh, really only milk. Primarily milk. That's one lamb. Hi, cutie. Another kitty. She looks at you, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lamb, he's gonna be a butcher in the month. He's big, he's like 120, right? Oh yeah, more than that maybe. Yeah. There's a lot of wool, but he's fine. This is the pig. Hi, piggy. Hi. And that's like second cutting and milk primarily. Now I'm fed him some cornmeal, now in, I started. What in milk? What? what was the first thing you said, end milk? The grass, the second cutting grass. Oh, they get they eat grass. Oh yeah, they that's why I love it. They, yeah. You you make that fresh grass ones. They love it. Do they eat hay? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They the they eat the best. I got it. You got it. Wink, wink. We should be giving these pigs some sun, but probably still better than most people can eat. These pigs are looking at me like they want to eat me. I think they do. The uh, New Balance Minimus are not ideal for this scenario. I actually told myself, Frank, put on some boots. They think I'm going to feed them. This pig's literally eating the wood. They're probably used to getting fed when someone comes in here. He's feeding the pigs mostly milk, but he's probably giving them some conventional corn, so. Uh oh. This guy's got animals all over the place. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. <laughs> He's definitely not amused. What's up, cutie? Don't look my camera. Don't you dare. He wants to smell me. This is funny, man. Like, what is that chicken doing? Let's <laughs> go all over the place. This is the guinea hens. Because you can't run them out because they're wild. Oh, these are, uh... What are these? I haven't seen these before. At least, uh... What do you, what do you feed them? 
the corn? No. And do they... Yeah. No, I do. You can boil eggs. Boil eggs? And then second cutting, what they do, they scratch it apart. They scratch it apart and they, they eat the leaves. The second cutting, okay. They want... The guinea hens need more protein. Yeah. They That's like why they like stuff? leaves. Okay, yeah. And you've got fresh grass with clover, clover leaves, and they the go yeah. nuts, you know. And they love bugs because I can't let them out. I just got them. That's why we keep them in. But they need protein you, you, and you, they you, love you, bugs. You, you keep them in because you're the one doing all the work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They, they're too wild. Once they go, they're gone. Because we got foxes, raccoons, every damn thing. Too many predators. I mean, how many hours a day do you work? You work 10, 12 hours a day? I used to 16, now it's too much for me. The big ones could get bigger, small farms are cooked. What is this, uh, souvenir? This is what you show the Muslims. They, oh. want, and they want to cut their throat. Yeah. So we want to change their brain set. Yeah. So I, you shoot them and kill them. Yeah. So you, you won't get injured, throat. okay? Yeah. That you put it from eye to horn, eye to horn, you put an X. This is where you shoot them with yeah. a bullet. Because they shot them down here. They think direct from... Oh, the... no, they have no idea what they're doing. Uh, right. They don't know where the they, brain... They probably used to slaughter a uh, goat and sheep between the brain. Yep. However, between the eyes. So I have to show them. I turn it over, show where the brain. See it is? It's up in here, not down oh, here. Do, uh, so They what, shot them here and just wounded them. Do they, tip, they come by in the fall usually, the Muslims, to slaughter the animals? Well, they, they're coming tomorrow to kill three of them. Oh, really? But the biggest day was it changes every year by the moon. They so, came in July 31, August 1. Uh, market price yeah. for beef at auctions. I, and that dictates corporate. But that's crap. That's crap. They're buying, they, then they don't want to pay you more for the good stuff. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I told them this. It's, it's probably price, double, triple market price. You said it. Yeah. They, and that's, they, don't, they don't want to pay. Well, then they, buy, then they should go buy that shitty beef. <laughs> If they don't, don't want to pay, have it anymore. yeah, <laughs> then they don't want to pay for quality. Yeah, they just want pounds of meat. So what do they do? They they shoot them, they cut them, they they quarter them, and they throw it in the truck, and then they cut break it down they, further they, at they, their homes. Yeah, they did all kinds of stuff, quarters. Yeah, quarters and load them up. There. What, what did they t they spend a couple hours the whole day doing it, and then well, they bring be afternoon for three three steers. Yeah, they're sending them direct for slaughterhouses, and it's horrible because good milking cows are killing them. Because they're not making any money on the milk. No, the farmers are losing their ass because milk is so low. And another thing is, well, you're going in dairy or whatever, but um, DFA, you know, the Dairy Farm America? Yeah. They have the corporation and they can control a lot of milk across America. They are building a, a huge farm, a 50,000 milking cow. 50,000 cows, can you imagine it? Where? Kansas State. Yeah. That's central New Central. 50,000 cow facility? What are they going to try to get enough milk for the whole United States? <laughs> They're putting small farms out of business. They go to auction, then they buy the best cows all the small farms. They're ruining yeah. the ruination of the small farms, and there will be no quality for milk. Those cows will be on cement. Uh, they're just, the milk will taste like water. That's just what it is now in New York. The markets in Walmart, they did the same thing in Indiana State. Do you know that? Yeah. Two no, years. It, it, it's, it's terrible. They're destroying pretty much all small businesses. They're controlling the food system. And yeah, I mean, they, they basically just, they've taken control of the entire food system. Absolutely. So people don't have a choice of where to buy food from. You are exactly. And then it, and then if they want to buy food, they come to someone like you, they're used to paying no money for cheap crap, but then they don't want to pay more. So they, they're not even really, yes, they're controlling the food supply, but they're not like directly saying you can't buy, they're just pricing people out. That's what they're doing. They're pricing you out, exactly. You can really hear those transmission problems. <laughs> I just finished up where the campers, I just finished a hill. Last week. Are you selling the hay or are you uh Fee, I've fed it all from the cows. Oh you just feed it all to the cows? There's no sales for hay because there's no cattle unless for horses. Most people got rid of their cattle? Yeah, there's very few cows. Used to have extra money, but it didn't happen. Oh these are the campers? Yep. So they walk through your property up to here. 
lucky as it can go up on hilltop because we just finished it so it doesn't hurt. Okay. This is his uh, other farm. Really high up. Nice view. There's some campers behind us that I don't really want to get on camera, but you guys can see this guy has been bailing hay down here. He's got a bunch of equipment. But really, really beautiful. really really windy because we're on the hilltop all right guys it's around 4 30 i stayed here way too long we went around uh to the other guy's property we took some pictures for him i uh, just enjoyed learned a little bit about the farm operations that type of stuff so definitely some thoughts to think about over the next uh, uh next few days week or two see what we want to do older guy really nice really sweet he's lived on the farm his whole life uh, he's got you know millions of dollars in property. He's looking to sell it. Doesn't really know what he's doing from a business standpoint outside of pricing. Like talked about a uh, bunch of different things. I gave him some ideas. Uh, I, I learned a little bit more about the farm, the infrastructure, what it's going to cost me to do these things. Uh, but I, I just feel kind of bad for the guy. You know, he's kind of by himself on the farm. Uh, you know, he was kind of talking to me like at the end, like, "Hey, I hope you come by soon." And and he he said like. Well, he didn't say that. He said, like, hey, I really enjoy talking to you. I really enjoy, you know, it's nice. Because you know, I feel bad. The guy probably hasn't spoken to anyone in God knows how long or, you know, because I'm a nice guy. You know, I'll talk to people about anything without wanting something from them. And he's probably used to people coming by and, and wanting stuff. Because he does have a lot of people come to that property. He does the hiking stuff, the camping stuff. He does the bunch of other stuff. But th this property definitely isn't going to work. It's, it's so close to the Wi-Fi tower. My cell signal is actually really strong. Uh, so so there's definitely a Wi-Fi concern and the the facilities are just so out of date You know it, it might work, but <laughs> this property isn't cheap. It's it's a million and the other farm he has is uh, over two million and uh, That two million dollar 200 acre property that he has beautiful 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 land I would love to buy that and build a whole farm and you know butcher shop and everything on it But I can't afford that uh, This is really close. It's about an hour and 45 minutes from my parents house so you know we're not driving like three hours into pa you know we're, we're really close into pa and that's probably also why there's a tower nearby but uh that'll be it uh so thank you guys for joining me uh, i was really hope you guys enjoy this i had some fun today so hopefully you guys have a little fun too watching this but uh i'll see you guys for tomorrow's video